All right, this one is a shout out to my baby girl, Lauren, because she wanted to know how to make a French dip sandwich. Now, I also have to take a tray of sandwiches to my church tomorrow for the harvest auction. So, I'm going to show y'all how to make a sirloin tip roast, which accomplishes all of that. We're going to do a sirloin tip roast. And uh, I took a picture. Bladen, I think you moved my thing. You did. I need my thing back. My uh, label. Where is it? Hello. Hi. Oh, <laughs> Hang on a minute. I don't know where I put it. It's right there behind you. How's it going? Not too bad. Alright, we're getting into the holiday season and it's time to start thinking about some big yummy suppers. Um, and that includes stuff like roast beef, um, turkeys of course, and hams, and all that kind of stuff. They called me from the church and asked me if I would, oh that's ready, if I would coordinate uh, the harvest auction tomorrow, which I'm happy to do. It's a major fundraiser for the youth group, and some of my kiddos are going to Haiti to help with the rebuilding of an orphanage down there in the next few months. So this is a fundraiser that's going to benefit my kids, so I'm happy to do whatever. Now. Let's talk about how to buy this thing. You can go and you can buy a prime rib. I'm going to give you a, a, a picture here in a second. I took it at the grocery store earlier today where I showed you the prices of some meats. I think one was a, a New York strip steak. Um, I think the other one might have been a prime rib. I don't remember. Anyway, it was very expensive. However, if you go to the big warehouse clubs, right? Check this out. See the unit price? $277. Now, yes, we've got almost nine pounds, but it's going to feed a crowd. And if you go and you buy one of these, there is nothing wrong with cutting this in half and stashing half in the freezer and then roasting it, you know, when you need it. Or if your family is small or you don't need a ton, cut it in the thirds or fourths, right? Same principle is going to apply. Now, to get started on this, we're going to do a couple things. Got my oven at 425 degrees. Can't find my little knife. My sister. <laughs> my sister has been here and she's rearranging my kitchen, which I'm gonna love. But for the moment, I'm missing some stuff. Okay, so we're just cutting slits, just like this, right? Now, depends on how much you like garlic. Mm. We, yeah, in our house, can't get enough. So I'm doing a bunch of these. You probably would do much better if you use a paring knife, but honestly, can't find one. Can't find it. Don't freak out about your equipment, you know, and, and if you don't have exactly the right thing, don't worry about it. Let me tell you, as somebody who has made do for years, I'll tell you, you don't have to be particular. All right, this is all we're going to do. We've got fresh garlic. Check it out. We're popping that down in all these little slits we just made, okay? I'm gonna get a better view. Okay, you wanna see what I'm doing? There you go, buddy. Just like that. You laughing? <laughs> yeah. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn this guy over and I'm gonna study. That looks like in a minute. All right, so check him out. Got my nine pound sirloin tip roast and I've studied it with garlic all over the place. And it's heavy. Yum. Now, next step, we're going to make a seasoning paste. We have fresh thyme, not fresh thyme, dried thyme, <laughs> dried oregano, onion powder, and granulated garlic. Okay. Then we're going to give it a couple tablespoons of kosher salt. And we're adding just enough olive oil to make a paste. Let me have this guy. You don't want to use fresh herbs to make a crust for a roast like this, mainly because they'll burn. That's all. That's your big secret. And you're just going to put that on top? Yep. We're going to give him a massage. Mm. I do a lot of shopping. Y'all, actually, y'all have been asking me lately about how I shop and how I do my pantry and 
and I actually have started shooting some videos for that because I don't do that the way most people do what I do do is a lot of shopping at the warehouse club so I do come home like my brother was laughing I have a 50 pound bag of popcorn I bought the other day <laughs> we eat a lot of popcorn and the way I shop and do my pantry it was under a dollar no it was, it was less than 50 cents a pound and if you price compare that across the board pretty good well it's the same thing with the per pound price of these meats if you look at the grocery store and you do the price comparison per pound you're way better buying big if your family can use and store it now if they can't don't throw your money away but if that's something that you can manage go right ahead I do and it makes a big difference all right so here's our paste this is it it sounds weird it does sound weird doesn't it and I'm sorry about that background noise. We've, we've been moving the coolers and freezers and all that stuff around. And refrigerators and the refrigerator. Yeah. Well, actually we don't have a refrigerator. It's a giant cooler. <laughs> we have a commercial cooler. Anyway, I can't get over there to unplug it. So I'm sorry about the hum in the background. It's across the kitchen now. So maybe that'll help. So there we go. Nice and pasty. That's a new word. Pasty? Yeah. Eh. Okay. 425 degrees. We're going to throw this in here uncovered and let it roast for about 15 20 minutes. Then I'm going to turn it down to 350 to 325. Without opening the door, I'm just going to walk away and leave it, right? Final step. I almost forgot. Meet thermometer. And you want it in the thickest part. So what do we think, Blaine? Where do you think? Like right, right, here? right around here. That's where it looks thick. Right in the thickest part, right to the middle. We're going to set this for 135 degrees. I'm going to wash my hands, throw that in the oven, and I'll show you the next step. Alrighty, so a few hours later, I don't know, maybe three and a half, four hours for a roast this size, we had an internal temperature hit of 135 degrees. Now you can see, it has continued to increase. That's okay. That's known as carryover cooking. It's when the, the cooking carries over after you've taken it out of the oven. That's perfectly normal. And what we want to do right now is nothing. Don't touch it. Do not cut until it's rested at least half an hour. Now, because I'm going to be slicing this thin for sandwiches, I'm going to give it as long as I can possibly get away with. Although I've got circling kids already coming in with eyes on the roast. Uh, I'm going to make them just let it sit here. I might eat that little piece of garlic. Light it, get off my roast. <laughs> mm, that's good. All right, when I do cut it, I'll show you what that looks like too. I have actually managed to get about an hour to let this roast rest, which is far more time than I thought it would. But check this out. Still has a 140 degree internal temperature. It went up to 145, so we got a full 10 degrees on the carryover cooking. So it went up to 145, it has dropped back down. Pretty safe to say we're good to go on this one. So I'm going to slice it open, show you what we got. I'm excited. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. <laughs> we can get rid of this guy now. Mm. And then that crunchy bit's for me. Mm. All right, a little messy. Yum. Let me tell you, the outside of that is wonderful. You can see where Blaine and I both kind of stole a couple garlic cloves out of there. All right, Blaine, you stay on that. Hang on, I gotta get a fork. Maybe. <laughs> This is our sirloin tip roast. Now, to get the super medium rare, we're probably gonna have to go to the center. Of course, this outside bit is gonna be more well done just because it was on the outside. And I need my knife sharpened again. My mouth watering. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Getting a close up on that, Blayden? Yeah. Okay. Now, because I'm going to save this for the church for sandwiches, I'm going to let it chill before I slice it real thin. You want but, hand? do what? You want to hand me a piece? Do I want to hand you a piece? Yeah. He hijacked my piece. 
Mm. This is my favorite piece anyway, this outside crusty part. See how, how'd we do, Blaine? Really good, really tender. Mm. Yeah, we did pretty well. When I cut this in the morning to make the sandwiches, I'll try to get a picture of what the very interior looks like. But let me tell you, super simple to do a sirloin tip roast. Stick a few garlic cloves in there, give it a nice rub with some salt and pepper and garlic and onion powder. What do we use? Thyme and oregano. Yeah. Start at 425, give it 20 minutes, turn it to 350, internal temperature of 135 degrees. Let it rest. Mmm. Dude, we did well on this one. <laughs>